Hi guys, good morning. Welcome to week three. I am kind of maintaining this week. I was up point two. And John, how did you do? But that's symbolic for good. I went down 1.6. We didn't quite make the 10 pound goal this week, but we are within striking distance, both of us. Yeah, I think because last week I had that eight pound loss, um, my body just kind of went into a little state of shock but we're gonna keep tracking. Um, this is our fourth week of tracking, so this is when the honeymoon phase is kinda over and we gotta stick to it, but we're gonna do our best. We'll talk to you later. Breakfast is done and a couple of errands done, so now we're going to take some time to go to um, my sister's house, pick up my oldest nephew, Caden. He is three years old, and the first movie we took him to see with his mama, we went to go see Winnie the Pooh, and he did really well. Actually, it was Christopher Robin, but for him it was Winnie the Pooh. And so now we're going to go see Smallfoot, and he's been super excited all week. We're going to count points and enjoy some popcorn with him. So, yeah, um, just because you're counting points doesn't mean you can't enjoy yourself. We had a pretty hearty breakfast at Cracker Barrel and counted that. And I think what we're going to do, we talked about it in the car on the way over there, how I found last time I did Weight Watchers and some other people in the community have found that shaking up your points tends to work. And although it's very counterintuitive to want to go above your dailies, sometimes it's necessary in order to keep progressing and losing weight. So I'm going back to the old method that I used to do where my weigh-in day, I have a super high points day. I track everything, but I eat basically what I feel like eating and go into my weeklies and it's fine and then the rest of the week we'll track kind of more normally maybe have one more medium-ish high day in the middle of the week and then on next week's video you'll see the progress and how that worked and um, if you like that idea and you want to see a week's worth of meals and activity and what we did to get to next week's result, give this video a big thumbs up of encouragement and all through the week then we'll be vlogging and share it with you next Saturday. But for now, we're headed to go see the movie. We'll talk to you later. Hey guys, it is now Sunday. We never really got to filming more of what happened yesterday, but I'll fill you in. So after John and I went and picked up Caden, we went to see Smallfoot, which was really cute, and we indulged ourselves in some popcorn um, with the butter on it because it was worth it to us to count all those points. We ended up eating a little bit more popcorn than we had uh, intended, partly because our nephew is, he's three, but he's a bottomless pit when it comes to popcorn, so we had to get a refill on our popcorn bucket. But anyway, it was worth it. We came home, had a reasonable dinner, and just um, were happy with how it went. And I talked to you a little bit about how we're going to be experimenting a little with varying up the way we do our points. So um, today we're staying on plan and I've got some cooking planned for today and I thought I might share some of that with you guys. So stay tuned. One of the things I'm going to be pre-prepping for the week um, and for future weeks today is spaghetti squash because you can use it in a number of different recipes. You can have it as a side dish on its own. You can add different herbs and spices to it or just use it any way you would use pasta, but it's healthy and it's zero points and very easy. So I'm going to share a little bit about that for you today in case you've never cooked a spaghetti squash before. So there's three different ways that you can prepare spaghetti squash depending on how much time you have it and what works for you. The one way I typically do it is actually to just put it in a slow cooker. If there's small spaghetti squashes, you can put both in there. All you gotta do is wash the outside first, stick it in the slow cooker, put it on low, and after about six to eight hours, it'll be nice and soft, very easy to cut. Um, you can pierce it first if you wanna let some of the liquid run out. Um, that sometimes helps, sometimes it doesn't really seem to matter. But that's one way I'll do it if I am planning on cooking dinner and I know 
Um, I can just put it in the slow cooker. If I don't have time or at the last minute I decide I need it, you can um, actually pierce it and then put it in the microwave for a few minutes. There's various tips and tricks on the internet about that. But the way I'm going to do it today is in the oven because I was gifted with eight fairly small spaghetti squashes and it's just going to take way too long to try and do them one or two at a time in a slow cooker or the microwave so the oven is the way to go. So let me show you how to cut open and prepare your spaghetti squash. So when you're preparing to cut your spaghetti squash, I have a rather small spaghetti squash, so this one I've discovered is actually fairly easy to cut. But I recommend that if it is a larger spaghetti squash or if you have a, sh a knife that's not very sharp, this is freshly sharpened, then you're going to want to pierce this first. Um, actually take a small knife, like a paring knife, and you're going to pierce it all the way around, making kind of a perforated line as to where you want to cut it. And then pop this in the microwave for two to three minutes just to soften the outside a little bit. It'll save you from losing your fingers. Now this particular squash is actually not so hard to cut, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it as is. And a lot of recipes and a lot of photos show you actually cutting it lengthwise from top to bottom. But what I found is that the strands in a spaghetti squash go this way, and so if you're cutting this way, you end up with really short pieces. If you cut it around the middle this way horizontally, you actually end up with more of a spaghetti texture. So take your spaghetti squash after it's been washed and dried. Put it on a cutting mat or cutting board. Make sure you're holding it firmly with one hand, but keep your fingers out of the way. And then you're just going to put pressure with a nice sharp knife. And you can go tip in, or you can go all the way through. And it even started to crack on this side, so it's helping me. Give it a little pressure. And there we go. So you can see there are seeds inside and you might even be able to see if you look closely that the strands, which aren't cooked yet, so they're going to stay put, are on the outside. You're going to take a fork and scoop out the seeds similar to what you would do with cleaning out a pumpkin. Um, one tip too is you can take those seeds and clean them off and they look just like pumpkin seeds and I'm told they taste very much like pumpkin seeds. So you can save them and make a snack if you like. If not, you're going to just take a fork and take, take this um, little fluffy part out, get all your seeds out when you're done. Should look something like this. And then to prepare this, you're just going to coat it. Um, I'm gonna use a spray with a little bit of olive oil, salt, and pepper, and then I'm gonna put it cut side down into the oven at 375 degrees for about 40 to 50 minutes. Now, um, the reason you put it cut side down is this is going to leak a lot of liquid. Um, there is a lot of water in this, so you're gonna to wanna to put it on a sheet, a baking sheet that has a bit of a lip to it. And then uh, you will have roasted spaghetti squash, and you can use it right away, or you can do what I'm doing. So since there's just two of us in my household, and I really don't have any plans in particular for the sp spaghetti squash this week, um, but we can throw some chicken sausage and some marinara sauce in it and make a quick dinner sometime this week or next week or whenever the need arises, what I'm going to do after I cook this is cool it, um, pull out the strands with a fork, and then I'm going to portion it into freezer bags. Uh, I actually have a food saver, so it'll vacuum seal it for me. And that will keep for about six months uh, vacuum sealed and frozen in my freezer. So I'm going to portion out just enough for a meal plus leftovers, because that's how I cook anyway. And then when we feel like having spaghetti one night, all I have to do is heat it up, throw on some sauce, and we've got dinner. Spaghetti squashes are done. They've cooled some of them. Um, the sugar that came out kind of burnt a little bit, so if there's any burnt on the bottom of these, I'm kind of just um, taking it off. But they look like this. Not too bad. Some of them are more crispy than others. Um, but here's what it looks like when it comes out, and what I'm doing with this strainer is actually putting my hand in a plastic baggie. Don't laugh, it's genius, right? Holding this over the sink and kind of pressing the water out of it so that when it freezes, um, 
when I thaw it back out, it doesn't become mushy. So I'm putting them in these vacuum sealed bags in portions that I can use for dinner and leftovers. And then I will vacuum seal these and pop them in the freezer and they'll be good to go. So this is my Food Saver Mini. I got this in about 2005, I think. I don't think they even make this model anymore. Um, but it's perfect. I bought it when I got my first apartment in 2005. And it's been perfect for, you know, buying meat and stuff in bulk, especially for singles or people who like to buy in bulk. You can buy your stuff and then vacuum seal it to avoid freezer burn and keep it fresh. So I've got these bags, um, and it's quite satisfying to vacuum seal. It sucks out all the air and then seals the bag shut. So I will show you what that looks like. So make sure that the bag is nice and clean and flat. We set the edge of the bag into the vacuum channel. Close it. And press right here and it sucks the air out and then it should seal it and the little green light comes on when it's done. Ta-da! Ready for the freezer probably label it first. One more quick thing before I wrap for the night. I discovered in my particular model of vacuum sealer that it doesn't have a setting that avoids sucking in liquid and there's so much liquid in the spaghetti squash that it was creating a problem. So a little paper towel in there to absorb the extra liquid solve the problem. But if you get a newer model, I've seen a liquid feature on it that will help. So keep that in mind. Um, this evening went well. We went on our picnic, had a nice light lunch. I'm under my points for today, so yay for that. Um, not by a lot, but just a little, and that feels good. And I even got to have half a brownie at the picnic, so that was nice. So if you guys like this video and want to see more, give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up also and leave us comments if you would like to see uh, like a week worth of tracking and the kinds of meals that we're prepping and all that um, in next week's vlog. Also, if you're new and you'd like to be a subscriber to see more videos, click that big red button down below and make a note in the comments let us know that you're new and we'd love to chat with you. Thanks so much for watching you guys. Be healthy this week and we'll see you next time. Bye!